Do. Jeff, thank you for being here, and I applaud you for taking on the tough issue of bullying. I think it's a topic, unfortunately, that touches ground for too many. It does. Thank you for having me, Laurel. It's, it's really my privilege to be here for you. We're glad to have you. Now, you switched gears. You went from being a professional wrestler, not only that, bad guy character is giant warrior and tiger steel, right. to now you're going into school speaking against bullying. Tell me, what, what propelled you to fight for this cause? Well, it was, you know, being a wrestler for as long as I was, I was always the bad guy for, you know, I had a 25-year career and probably spent 20 of it being the big bad guy everywhere I went. So I've always enjoyed working with kids and doing things with them, but I wasn't really able to do that as much when I was the bad guy because, you know, I wasn't really supposed to be signing right. autographs. I was supposed to be mean and all this. So and I to maintain to, that character. Yeah, so I really didn't get to spend the time with the kids I would have really liked to have had. So when, you know, it finally came to the realization it's time to retire and it's, you know, it's better for me to start running my mouth than to get hit in the head with chairs. <laughs> That, you know, I decided that this is something that really needs to be addressed. And it's become such an epidemic in the last 10 or 15 years that it's just, it's really just unreal and stuff as to what's going on out there today. It really is. And they also called you the get back on your feet guy. Yeah. Tell me how you help students get back on their feet to disarm and deal with bullying. Well, there's a lot of things that can, can go on. And I always, you know, one of the big things is communication. And a lot of the kids that are getting bullied and things like that, they really don't want to talk about it. So, I mean, it, it still keeps happening because they won't talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. And if they'll, you know, talk to a, a principal or a teacher or a coach, a counselor, their parents, and let them know that this is happening, then somebody can step in to help put a stop to it. So I always tell, you know, parents especially, if you're looking for um, to try to help th this whole situation, and you start talking to your school and your administrators and people like that that can make policies and create a very strong anti-bullying policy. And when they do that, they're showing that the schools that have these, they're, the bullying situation has, has been reduced by 25 to 50 percent. Wow. So it's really important to let people know what's going on. Yeah. There's a, a website that I always tell people about called Sprigio.com, which is a site where you can go and fill out an incident report on what the bullying was. Okay. And they will actually take it and send it to the school principal. Wow. So that way nobody sees the kid going into the principal's office or the counselor's right, office or overhears it. Right, because that could be potentially it. more dangerous sure. for them also. Because then it's like now they're getting that label of being a tattletale or a narc. Right. And, what a great you idea. You know, so that's a really good site to be able to use if the school doesn't have a policy. But a lot of schools now have created the anti-bullying policies where they have an online form mm -hmm. where they can tell somebody what the situation is. And that allows for the teachers and the administration to be able to start watching this kid a little bit closer because eventually and stuff he's going to do it again and when they do then somebody can catch him. Right, you got to catch that early. Right. I like to hear that. That's new news and good news at that. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll agree that bullying is just rapidly more prevalent, especially oh. with technology. So yeah. how do you help them combat and protect themselves against technological bullying? Well, that's the hard thing. You know, with boys, it tends to be a lot more physical bullying. You know, they want to push people around, the name calling, pushing them into lockers, flushing their heads in a toilet. You know, the stuff that's been around. So the boys are a lot more physical. It's the girls is where this has become such a big epidemic for a lot of the internet cyber bullying because the bully that's doing it feels like they've got that anonymity of nobody knowing who they are because they've got a screen name and. So they feel like they can right. just keep going doing they it because hide behind it nobody's going to say anything, and it's very hard to stop. So that's where the a lot of this is starting to have the problems. And one thing you can kind of do to to resolve a little bit of that is you know everybody wants to do great with their kids. They want to give them the smartphones. They want to give them a laptop and all those things. Right. But if you create just a family computer that's in a com that's in a family room, then a lot of times that that prevents the kids from going on to a lot of the you know, the social sites, you know, porn sites, things like that, because they don't want anybody walking through the room and seeing what's going on or what part of the conversation it is. Mm. They, so that eliminates a little bit of it because you're not spending as much time out there on social media. But it's such a big part of kids' lives now, it, it just makes them so susceptible to it. Right. And oftentimes bullying can kind of place you into a, a state of isolation, whether oh. if it's other people putting you there or as a protective measure for yourself, how do you help them 
get to a place where they feel like they're safe and they're not in that isolation. Well, the hard thing is, is like when I was a kid, you were teased at school and, you know, I was teased for being tall and skinny and, you know, my dad gave me a real funny haircut and stuff, you know, <laughs> because it just, I was virtually bald and stuff at that time, which was before bald was being cool. But now it's the, the bullying, when I left, it, the teasing and everything, is when I left school, it was over. So mm -hmm. when I got home, I was perfectly safe again. Right, you had that time to unwind and, and relax yeah. and feel safe again. And today, it's, that's a completely different story because now the bullying is happening at school will often follow you home. Right. And then it starts becoming this dire situation to these kids because they constantly feel like there's no way that I can get out of it. And that's where the term bully side has come from now and stuff. Is that a lot of these kids and stuff, it, it just keeps going and going with every, without there ever being an end to it, that they start feeling like suicide is the only way out of it. Yeah. And the rise in teenage suicide because of bullying is, is just, it, it's crazy and stuff is what those numbers are. And I mean, some of the numbers out there are just insane. Tell me some of the statistics. Well, you're looking at one out of three kids say that they've been bullied sometime during their school year. Wow. The scariest one for me is the fact that 160,000 kids a day now, this is over 3 million kids a month skip school because they've been bullied. No way. So, I mean, they're losing out on their education because of this. Right. And one out of 10 dropouts from high school are because of bullying. Issues and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just they feel like there's no other, no other way out of it. I mean, probably one of the most known ones lately is Charlotte McKinney. You know, the girl that did the, the Carl's Jr. ads during the Super Bowl mm. and was on Dancing with the Stars. And I mean, she was a real pretty girl. So I mean, she got made fun of because, you know, she was very voluptuous. She was very pretty. And so the kids all made fun of her because she had bloomed a lot more than what everybody else had in high school. And because of that, she dropped out of school at 17. Wow. So, I mean, it really is, it has become a big epidemic in the last 10 or 15 years. It really takes everybody to start pitching in to put a stop to it. How do you help students shift the power back to themselves as to who defines them? Well, I always say that there's a Bob involved with every bullying situation. There's a, a bully, there's the observers, and then there's the bullied. And the observers are the ones that can make a huge difference because kids, if they will step in, and I know it's a tough thing to do to you know, take that big step in there to, to intercede for the victim, but they're showing that it can, it, most bullying situations will stop 50% of the time if a bystander wow. will step in and defend the victim. And I, I mean, it's tough to be able to do that, but if more kids are becoming involved to where they're taking action against the bullying, it'll start stopping. But it's going to take everybody, students alike. And I mean, the sad thing is a lot of these kids have got the the smartphones and everything, and they would rather take videos of the situation so they can put it on YouTube and hope for the next viral video so they can gain a little popularity from that right. instead of stepping in and helping. Mm -hmm. Such a shame. It really is. So hashtag Unbreakable You sounds like a hashtag with impact. Tell me about the campaign and, and what the cause is for that. Well, the big thing came with that one is that, you know, I wanted these kids now to be able to feel like they can bend, but they're not going to break. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that comes from removing labels. And the kids these days sit back and worry about what other people think so much and what the other people are saying. And really, at the end of the day, the only person's opinion of you that really matters is yours. You've got to be happy at looking at that, pe that person in the mirror every morning. And if you're happy with that person, then it really doesn't matter what anybody else is saying about you. That's true. And trying to develop that type of mindset to where you start realizing just how important of a person you are in, in life. And sometimes you might need to be looking as, you know, at the type of friends you're hanging out with if you know, this kind of thing is happening. You know, they always say is stuff, you know, if you're hanging out with nine troublemakers, a good chance is you're gonna be the tenth. Yeah. So, you know, start looking at different type of people to hang around with so you're not having to run into those kind of bad apples and stuff that can cause a lot of problems for you. Very good. I appreciate you being here today. Oh, this thank is a you. I've enjoyed topic, it. And I just, it's an honor to meet you and to talk with oh, you. Oh, thank we you for having me. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All the best to you. Uh -huh.